Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the topic of transmedicalism, which is something I've been seeing discussed a lot online. And I want to voice, there's a lot that I want to say, so hopefully I'll be able to cover all of it. So what is transmedicalism? There are different ways of defining it, but basically, transmedicalism in the narrowest sense is the idea that in order to be legitimately transgender, you need to experience gender dysphoria. Now, that definition is a little bit vague, because it's like, what is gender dysphoria? Um, and if you ask different people, you'll have different senses of, of dysphoria. Like, some people might have something that they would call dysphoria that another person would explain as, as in some other way. They, they wouldn't necessarily call it dysphoria. So that's the first problem with that definition. But, but in practice, I find that transmedicalism is something a little bit broader. So it's not just this idea that being trans is the same as having gender dysphoria. I think it's, it's more broadly a set of ideas that says that being trans is a medical condition, and the only or the best way to treat being trans is to hormonally transition, or to engage in other medical transitions that changes your body's sex characteristics. And furthermore, transmedicalism usually encompasses a bunch of other beliefs. So for example, there are beliefs about brain sex. So one idea that I've heard voiced frequently in transmedicalist circles is the idea that trans people have a brain sex that corresponds to the gender they identify with, and not the gender they were assigned at birth. And so this explains the disconnect. And there's some evidence for this. Like, there is some evidence from studies of the brains of transgender people that finds that, on average, trans people have certain brain structures that are more similar to cis people of the gender they identify with than cis people of the gender they were assigned at birth. So like, a trans woman will be assigned male at birth, but have certain brain characteristics more similar to uh, m most people assigned female at birth. Okay, so there are these studies out there. First thing that I want to emphasize, all these brain structure studies, they're looking at averages. And they're not saying that, like, even if you forget trans people, if you say like, oh look, there are differences in male and female brains, well the differences are on average. And there's all sorts of overlap and uh, diversity within each group. And I think that's important because that, that diversity also exists within trans people. And this is the first point of beef that I have with transmedicalism, is that it seems to be making this claim that like, is in very rigid black and white terms, very absolutistic language, like this is your brain sex, and this is blah blah blah, and like, it bothers me because not all trans people are going to conform to that ideal, and that's not, like, the, the idea that they conform to this sort of pattern uniformly, that's not what the research concludes. If you read these scientific papers, they're not, the researchers are not concluding it in this sort of absolutistic fashion. They're just looking at averages and they're like, oh look, there's a statistically significant difference here. So that's the first thing I want to throw out there. Next thing I want to talk about, uh, in the discussion of transmedicalism, I often hear a lot of slurs thrown around. So, overwhelming majority of people that I know don't like this viewpoint. And in fact, many of them are off actively hostile towards it. But I think they take that hostility a little bit too far. And one of the things I hear, I hear this slur, true scum. It's spelled T-R-U-S-C-U-M. And I really hate this. And people use this term to refer to people who voice transmedicalist ideas. I don't like negative labeling at all. I don't support it. I try not to do it as much as possible. I don't want to use a negative label to refer to another human being, and I want to separate the idea of disagreeing with someone's ideas or beliefs from disliking them as a person or disapproving 
of them or condemning them as a whole person. And this is exactly what happens when people use these slurs. They're, they're dehumanizing. Like, people say, like, true scum. It's like, that's a horrible thing. It, it's kind of similar to dehumanizing language that you hear used by white supremacist groups and by people voicing homophobic ideas. Like, it's it, it, plainly obvious to me that it's a bad thing. I don't want to do it, I don't want other people to do it. So I want to make clear I, I disapprove of that. Similarly, the people voicing the transmedicalist ideas also use slurs. Uh, I've heard uh, there's this slur called too cute. I've heard the slur trans-trender or gender-trender. Um, these are slurs that are used to refer to all sorts of different kinds of people. They're often used to refer to people who identify as trans but don't want to horm hormonally transition. They're often used to refer to non-binary people, whether or not those people want to hormonally transition. This is one stereotype I want to break. Whether or not people want to hormonally transition is to some degree independent of whether they are binary or non-binary trans. On average, more of the binary trans people that I know want to hormonally transition. But I know a few who don't want to, for various reasons. And similarly, non-binary people are all over the map. I know people who have hormonally transitioned, I know people who haven't, who want to, I know people who have partially transitioned and then stopped, um, and I know people who don't want to at all. So, like, it's important to separate out these two things, and I think in a lot of the transmedicalist discourse, all of these distinctions get ignored or glossed over. So that's, that's that one thing. Uh, so, okay, I think I've covered most of the important things. I want to talk about why I dislike transmedicalism, and why I think it's a bad thing, why I disagree with it. Um, the first thing, though, I want to talk about is how I hear this viewpoint voiced. Like, all over the internet there are people saying, like, you need dysphoria to be trans, and saying things like, oh, if you're tra really trans you will want to hormonally transition, and things like that. And they keep repeating themselves. One of the videos I made recently was about this exact point, that often people who don't necessarily have a good set of logic or reasoning behind their, their viewpoints will just keep repeating those viewpoints over and over again, until people start to believe them, like it reinforces it, and how this practice can promote unhealthy thinking and can promote untruthful ideas. I think this is exactly what goes on in transmedicalist communities. I've never heard solid reasoning for why the transmedicalist viewpoint is correct. And on the other hand, I've heard very solid reasoning for why it is harmful and problematic. And if you, want, if you want to understand this, you need to go back and look at how trans conditions and trans people used to be treated, which tra being trans used to be treated as a psychiatric disorder. And if you go back to earlier versions of the DSM, this diagnostic manual used in psychiatry, you will find that being trans was treated as a disorder. There's this gender identity disorder. So the idea is that there is something wrong with you because you identify as a different gender from what you were assigned at, at birth, and that that is inherently a disorder. Trans people had a problem with this because, and I, I identify as trans, we don't want to be treated as if we inherently have a mental disorder. And this is not true of all trans people, but this is true of an overwhelming majority of trans people and there was a lot of activism to push for the change of how this was treated, and then this happened. Now, the newer version of the DSM no longer has gender identity disorder, and instead it has gender dysphoria. So the idea is, if you have distress that is significantly impairing your life, that is con treated as a mental condition, and that is what needs treatment. There's nothing inherently bad, according to the new way of thinking, about being trans. And I personally find this liberating, and I think most trans people do, because the idea is that we are now not treated as if we have something inherently wrong with us just by virtue of existing, but instead 
we can get treatment for the specific things we want treatment for. And there's a virtual consensus on this new viewpoint. The American Psychological Association, the APA, has a very clear definition of what it means to be trans, on the, and it, it's on the basis of identity. The definition does not, re, uh, does not reference dysphoria. Other major organizations like GLAAD, which is a broad LGBT organization, activist organization, kind of like an anti-defamation league, their definition of trans, transgender references identity. Um, the TSER, uh, an educational organization run by trans people, I'm going to put links to all these in the description of this video, their definition also references gender identity. So there's a, an almost virtually complete consensus among all the major organizations around this newer definition of being trans, saying that you don't need dysphoria to be trans. And this new definition is the basis, like it's the result, it's not the basis, it's the result of activism and the result of trans people pushing for this change. So um, I really am open to dialogue with people voicing trans medicalist viewpoints, but I do disagree with them, and I think it's important that if someone wants to voice this viewpoint, that they do so in a way that actually explains where they're coming from and doesn't just repeat assertions over and over again, not going to respond well to that. I'll say that up front. So like, feel free to leave comments, but don't expect me to leave up comments that are disrespectful. I do moder moderate this channel, and if, if you're not going to make a well-formed argument, your comment's not going to stay up. Like if you're just attacking me with slurs or personal attacks, something like that. Yeah, that's what I have to say. I know this has been long. I hope that you've gotten something out of it, I hope that you find this is interesting or illuminating somehow. Yeah, thank you.